Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at the Athlon 200GE, the performance it can give you, and building a budget system. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so you're probably not a stranger to this CPU by now, or APU. This is the Athlon 200GE, a 3.2 gigahertz, dual core, four threaded APU with built-in Vega graphics. Now this can be a brilliant base or placeholder for an AM4 based system. So let's take a quick look at what I've built already. Now this system here has cost me in the region of about £350. So let me run through the parts quickly so you can get an idea of where the money's spent, where you could spend your money, or where maybe you could spend your money slightly better. So first of all, the processor. Now the processor at the moment in the UK, the 200GE, you can get for £42, which is absolutely ridiculous. That is a very, very low amount of money. When it first came out, I think we were looking at around about 60, maybe 55 pounds, but now 42 pounds, it's not a massive investment. So if you're gonna be using this as a placeholder in a system, waiting for the new Ryzen 3000 processors or APUs, then this is gonna be a fantastic placeholder, but also a very good APU in its own right. Now motherboard wise, I've gone with the MSI, the B350M, which did need a BIOS update in order to use this APU but you could also trade this in for something like the ASRock B450, an excellent choice, around about 50 pounds. Similar price for this, the B450, or B350 rather, which cost me about 49 pounds. So RAM, RAM is actually quite important. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you're gonna be using this as a placeholder, then you probably wanna spend a little bit more money and getting some faster RAM. I've actually got QMOX DDR2400 in there, but at the moment, you can still get 3000 megahertz rated RAM, eight gigs in a single stick for just 40 pounds in the UK, which is a fantastic value for money. Moving on to storage, a 120 gig SSD, although not massive, absolutely fine for installing your operating system and a few programs. You can pick up for as little as 18 pounds in the UK. And if you couple this with a one terabyte mechanical drive for about 40 pounds, that gives you a lot of options and a lot of storage for less than 60 pounds all in. Now moving on to the power supply, you could, obviously, if you're using this CPU, you could go with a very, very low rated power supply and not be too concerned about the overall outcome. But if you want a mid-range power supply with the option of multiple PCI Express connections for graphics cards, then you can spend about 35 pounds on like a Rio Toro 500 watt PSU, easily picked up from Amazon. And then you've got the case. Now, in this particular instance, I've installed in the Gamax Solar, which is a little bit more than what I wanted to spend, but is a really nice looking case. And with the addressable RGB, the tempered side glass panel, it looks really nice. So if I am gonna use this as a placeholder and maybe upgrade this to a Ryzen 3000 when they come out, it's gonna make the system a lot more appealing. Now you could also go for something like the Rio Toro CR488, which at the moment in the UK you can get for about £33, including postage from Amazon Prime, which again is fantastic. So if you take all those parts into consideration, you're looking at about £250, £260, give or take a few pence here and there. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now you can add a GPU. Now, a lot of people will think that the Athlon 200GE is a low end CPU or APU, so you can't really do much with the graphics card. Now, a lot of people would suggest a card such as this. This is the GTX 660 Ti, which is an older card, and you could pick one of these up for about 30 to 50 pounds on the used market. But for this particular installation, I've gone with a slightly better graphics card, which in some cases will bottleneck the CPU, but it is a very good match. And in my testing, which you'll be seeing later on in this video, you'll see how well the game's actually played within this combination. Now I've put in a EVGA GTX 970 4 gig model. Now this you can pick up on the used market for about hundred pounds. You could potentially swap out if you're looking for new, you could maybe uh, swap out for a RX 570 or maybe even a four gig RX 580 if you can pick one up cheap enough. But somewhere around the RX 480 eight gig, the 570 four gig or eight gig, the 580 four gig or eight gig, or the GTX 970, actually does make a really good pairing for this APU. So that's the components out of the way. Now, what I've done is because this motherboard allows you to overclock the CPU slightly, 
I've done some game testing to see where actually the sweet spot is for the bottleneck of this APU with a graphics card. Now I've tried a few graphics cards, the 1050 Ti, the 660 Ti, the GTX 970 and RX 580. And I found out of all of them, the GTX 970 seems to be the best option. AMD drivers tend to have a slight overhead on the CPU. So the Nvidia drivers are giving this a little bit more of a fighting chance. And in a lot of the games, we found that although the CPU was pegged at 100% in a lot of titles, the graphics card was getting near that sort of level as well, around about the 80 to 90% mark. And in some cases, 100% with the CPU usage at a similar level. So this really, for me, is the sweet spot. So let's take a look at a few games and see how it plays. So first up, let's take a look at some Battlefield 5. So as you can see, this is actually with the CPU at its stock setting at 3.2 GHz and the game runs actually really nicely, maintaining pretty good frame rates throughout and pretty much always aiming for that sweet spot of 60 frames per second. Next up, Far Cry New Dawn, another AAA title which is just out and also actually plays very good. Now you would expect this to play quite good being it is optimised for AMD, but we're using an NVIDIA graphics card so maybe that takes a little bit away from it, but actually it still runs very nicely indeed. Again, hitting those sweet spots of 60 frames per second in most cases, dipping down to the 40s and as you can see from the benchmark, the benchmark runs quite nicely topping out at the upper 60s and the lowest round about the upper 30s, lower 40s. So all in all, actually a pretty good gaming experience. Now in Rocket League, Rocket League played actually really well with the graphic settings set to auto, really high fidelity and with the refresh rate lock turned off we're getting some really high frame rates, averaging around about the 120, 130 mark, but hitting highs as high as 140, 150. So if you're using this system with a higher refresh rate monitor, you shouldn't have any problems. Although in all fairness, really for this kind of budget system, I would say it's probably unlikely that you're gonna have a higher refresh rate monitor, maybe a free sync one up to 75 Hertz, which would fit really nicely. And so moving on to uh, an old favorite, CSGO. Now CSGO plays the game really nicely. It should do, it is an eSports title, but again, it can be quite CPU demanding. So in this title, we're getting some pretty good frame rates and the game actually seems very playable and is really enjoyable. So if the eSports titles like Rocket League and CSGO are your thing, this is gonna be right up your street and is giving, and is gonna give you a little bit more extra performance over what the onboard graphics would and also again if you're using this as a placeholder in your system and you're possibly thinking of putting a new Ryzen in there when they come out then this is going to be absolutely great. So there you go there's a quick roundup of some of the performance you can get from the GTX 970 in combination with the Athlon 200 GE with a very modest price. This sort of price realistically isn't a great deal of money again you can sort parts out and build it however you like to look at the future or to save money. The choice is entirely up to you. So let me know what you think about this setup in the comments section below. Do you have any recommendations? Is there any other games you would like to have seen tested? And if so, why? Let me know. So this has been the Athlon 200 GE with the GTX 970 and actually running really nicely. And I think this is pretty much the sweet spot for this CPU. So let me know what you think in the comments. Always interested to hear your thoughts and your ideas. In the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.